Dale Peterson is the creator of S4 and the program chair of S4 events. Please welcome Dale to the S4 main stage. Wow, this is really great. We even have people up in the balcony this year. This is very exciting. So we uh, actually started S4 back in 2007 and it was the primary reason we started it was to develop a vibrant ICS security community. Back then we had under 40 people in the room. And here today we have, at last count, and it was still going up, we have 719 people plus the Pondone competitor. So yes, yes, and, and I think a lot of the audience deserves a lot of credit for building that community and we're glad S4 can play some role there. Uh, it continues to be one of our main missions to help challenge, nurture, and grow this community. But back when we were in this tiny little room for the early years of S4, it was really more of a support group than, than a conference. You know, you were, you were very lonely. There were very few people in ICS security. And, you know, when I found out there was this guy named Langner in Germany that did the same thing I did, it was, it was good. I wasn't alone. But after about five years, maybe in the 2012 time frame, we actually, I guess, adopted a second mission, informally, unofficially at first, but we've leaned into it in the last five years. And that's to create an environment where we can break out of just our normal thinking, come up with creative solutions, move from slow incremental pros progress to really dramatic ideas, things that are going to be discontinuities, major, major changes, things that are going to create the future. Later today, at the end of the day, I'm going to talk with Andy Greenberg, the author of that great book, Sandworm, here on the main stage uh, at 4.30. And of course, when you're going to do an interview, you read the book, you reread the book, you take a lot of notes, you think of your questions. I have a lot of questions for Andy. But two meta concepts came through to me as I was studying that book. The first one was Richard Clark was on this stage three years ago, and he said one of the real challenges we have in ICS security was it never happened before. It's very hard to get executives to give you support when you're arguing for something that has never happened before. And as Andy documented, it has happened now. So we're past that point. The other thing that I got from it, though, was interesting, and that was all these events that he talked about in great detail. We actually knew what was going to happen. We knew what they were going to do, and we knew how they were going to get in. If we look back at, let's say, the Ukraine attack in 2015, where they loaded rogue firmware on the serial to Ethernet gateways, well, Daniel Peck and I showed that back in 2009 with the control logics, how easy it was to brick these devices because they didn't have signed firmware. So we knew that was going to happen. All the way back in 2004, I saw Eric Byers at an ISA event demonstrate the insecure by design process. He showed how, guess what? If you're on a control system, you can control a process because there was no security. And then the Project Basecamp group you see there with all those red Xs, they demonstrated that in spades in 2012. But we knew that if the bad guys got on our systems, they would be able to change our process. In 2012, Sean McBride and the team at Critical Intelligence, they did this spear phishing exercise. They said, let's work with three pipeline companies. Let's see if we can spear fish people that had remote access into the ICS, into the control center. And you can see the titles of the people that they did. Control room supervisor actually clicked on it three times before 
he finally stopped. But we knew how they were going to get into their network. All these things that Andy describes, we knew about. Even if you take something more sophisticated like Triton, one of the things Triton showed was the danger of running compiled logic natively on the processor or natively in the OS that the processor is running. Reed Whiteman was harping on that back in 2015, 2016 with the CODASYS system. So from a technical perspective, we have not really learned that much that we didn't know. And I guess in some sense you can say as a community, you know, and I'm, I'm part of this community, we failed. We did not stop from happening what we knew was going to happen. I guess though we can look at this as a glass is half full. We maybe just have not been successful yet. One of the reasons we haven't succeeded is we haven't done a good job communicating with executives, telling them what we need to do and persuading them that they need to put their own personal capital, they need to invest in this, they need to say this is important to the organization. And it's not just leadership and executives and asset owners and vendors, but it's also people in government and industry. If we go back to the case in 2015 with Ukraine, we know that we had a vivid example. We knew it was going to happen, and then it actually happened where signed firmware, the lack of signed firmware bricked a device, the fact that they were using remote access with single factor authentication allowed someone to spear fish and get into the network. These things actually happened. And when you look at the, I, the ICS, CERT bulletins, when you look at the NERC and FERC recommendations, industry groups, ISA, yeah, they talked about it in the little print, but where was the leadership saying, raising the flag and saying, hey, this cannot stand anymore. We need to change this. We didn't get that from our leaders. Now, it would be easy for me to point and say the leadership failed, but when we really think about it, the people in this room, and I've seen the registration, this is an incredibly impressive crowd. You know, tremendous amount of talent here in ICS and related fields. We did not do our job in convincing management of what they needed to do. And so one of the things we're doing here this year at S4 that's a little different is on the main stage you're going to see more sessions on communicating with executives and risk management. And not risk management from an IT or OT perspective, but risk management from a corporate perspective. So for example, tomorrow morning, Lisa Soto, who's one of the top lawyers in advising boards of directors of their legal responsibilities when it comes to risk management, she's going to tell you what she tells them and what they think they need to do when it comes to cyber risk management today and what's coming in the next one to three years. Uh, this afternoon on the stage, Russell Thomas, this is going to be a great session, he's going to talk about the Norsk Hydro incident and he's going to tell you how a company like Norsk Hydro would calculate the losses due to that in financial terms so that you understand how you can talk about impact to your organization. He's also going to talk a little bit about what might and might not be covered by cyber insurance. And then the last example I'll give you is on Thursday, uh, we have a gentleman from Moody's, and Moody's has this new effort. You might know Mu Moody's, they're the ones who do the cyber risk rate or the credit risk rating, whether you're AAA or double B or anything like that. They're coming out with a cyber risk rating. So he's going to tell you how they're going to get that risk rating and how they expect it to be used. So hopefully we'll get better at, at working with executives, at persuading executives. The thing is, once we get good at that, it's really important what we tell them they should do or what we recommend they should do. All too often, and we can look back, we're just starting a new decade here, we're in the 20s, so you look back at the teens and you look forward to the 20s. And as I think of that and I look at what did we recommend in 2010 for security control, security recommendations, security advice, and what are we recommending in 2020? 
it's remarkably similar. Probably the biggest difference is in detection. But it pretty much boils down to most of the recommendations are implement good IT security practices. Or this term that I really hate, cyber hygiene. Now, now, you know, who can be against hygiene, right? Hygiene's good. You should have hygiene, and it's, it's such an easy to understand, accessible term. But when we look at the recommendations, which again are typically good IT security practices, it's going to give us minimal risk reduction for a lot of effort. It's not going to get us where we need to be, especially with the, uh, the threat and the environment where ICS is in growing much faster than we're addressing it. It's really more of a feel good than true risk reduction. And the challenge with that is that if we're successful, let's say we're all successful and we convince management that we need to invest heavily in cyber hygiene and all we get is feel good. It's going to be very difficult to get support for the next thing we ask them to do. So one of the people that we're going to bring on stage tomorrow uh, is Ed Schweitzer. And I'm really excited to interview here, him on stage tomorrow. In the early 80s, he invented the digital protective relay. So he has a lot of experience in creativity, invention, and most importantly, driving change in a very change-resistant industry. So hopefully we'll get some tips from him. But one thing I think we all need to think about is why are we so wedded to this old approach? Why aren't we trying something new? Because it's not as if what we've been trying the last 10 years has been terribly effective. So it's, it's time for something new. Now, if we get this new idea, so let's say we we come up with something inventive. We get executive support. The other thing we need to do is we need to move much, much faster. There's an idea that I'm actually very hopeful about. Uh, it's something related to consequence reduction as a bigger factor in risk reduction. And this might be INL CCE. This could be cyber PHA. It could be something else. It goes by a lot of different names. But I believe this could be one of those big ideas that gets us that dramatic change. But when you look at the lack of progress we've made on this in 2018 and 2019, it's really tragic. Now, we shouldn't spend a lot of time obsessing, oh, what did, you know, we missed our opportunity, this is really bad. But we should be looking and saying, whatever strategy and tactics we were doing in 2018 and 2019, it didn't work. So what are we going to do that's different? So you're here at S4 now, and we try to create an environment where you can come up with these different ideas. You can discuss them with a lot of people. You're in an environment that is not your standard conference environment. If this is your first time to S4, I think you'll find that it's very different. If you've been coming to S4 year after year, First of all, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. You've been a big part in growing this community. But I think even you'll see there's some new things every year. Like we put this tent outside. We put the tent outside so that if three or four of you have an idea and you want to talk about something, you can go out hopefully in some good weather and sit down and talk. And that may be more important than any sessions you're missing inside. We've got a great lineup of sessions, but as we all know, the hallway con, or this time the outside in the sunshine con, is often where things are done. And it's not just S4 here this week. There's things going on all around S4. A uh, few years back, the beer ISAC started after hours at S4. And now it's grown and grown and grown, and it's quite huge here. But it's a great example of community building, and a lot of information sharing goes on at the beer ISAC. And I think a lot of new ideas are formed there. There's other events going on all over the place around here, and that's all good. We're just trying to be, bring people together to create big new ideas and then move them forward fast. So my recommendation for you, and really my hope for you this week, is that you'll come in here with strong positions loosely held. 
And this is a very experienced audience. So you come in here, and I'm sure you've got a lot of very strong beliefs as to what should and should not be done in ICS security. And that's good, and you should propose those and stand behind those, but also try to just break out of your normal mindset and maybe just not throw away anything that differs from what you believe. Bring it in, consider it, especially in light of maybe your idea hasn't worked so well over the last five, 10 years. So strong positions loosely held. The other thing is have fun, loosen up, talk to a lot of people here, okay? Especially the people you don't know. The establishing and renewing relationships here is a big part of the event. And most importantly, when you find that new belief, that thing that you think is going to make the difference, it's not just going to be the small change, but you know, it's going to be a step function kind of change, enroll in it. Actually say, I'm going to do something. I'm going to contribute to this effort. I'm going to lead this effort. But actually take a step to do something you believe in. I think the last thing I want to leave you with before we start the rest of the program, and it's really a personal message to each and every one of you, is this is a great time to be in the ICS security business. Over half the companies here, and I'm not just talking about the sponsors, all of the 700 people, over half your companies are trying to hire ICS security professionals. There's so many jobs out there of all different types, of all different organizations. So this is not the time to be doing drudgery that you don't think is gonna make a difference. You should use your time here to figure out what you think is important, what you think is gonna make a difference, and then make it work in your organization, or if that doesn't work, you should find a place where you can invest in that because this is the best opportunity we're ever gonna have to do work that we love work that we think will make a difference. So thank you for coming and welcome to S4.